This conference will now be recorded. Mayor Atchison, thanks so much for uh, joining us. Um, it's a pleasure to see you and, and talk about what's happening here in our community um, as we are diving in with all of our counselors, asking them a different focus questions. And today we're gonna talk to you about um, specifically what's going on in Westminster as it's related to the pandemic and where we are uh, in dealing with this. Well, Greg, thanks for asking. Um, as you are aware, I do a two meetings a week Every Monday morning, I do a, a video broadcast with the Westminster Chamber where I report out on some of the same thing I'm going to tell you now. But then every Thursday, I also meet with the Tri-County Health Department looking at where we're at, where we think we're headed. So let me give you a very short history. And I'm talking about infection rates. Now, this number I'm going to give you is the number of people per 100,000. And I'll give you the dates that uh, take us back a couple of weeks. August 27th, we were at 128. September 3rd, 116. September 10th, 104. All going in a good direction. And then we hit September 17th. Went up to 105. Not bad, just one tick up. But then September 24th hit and we were at 153. Four days later, September the 28th, we were at 200. In the last couple of weeks, our infection rate in the Adams County, including Westminster, has more than doubled. Our uh, positivity rate, which had been 5.2, went up to 5.36. We won't get the next update until this coming Thursday. Again, going the wrong direction are people who are complying with mask orders. Now this number is not just Westminster, it's for the entire county as surveyed by the employees of Tri-County Health. We went from an 88% positive uh, usage of mask and we dropped it to 86. Where we're seeing the infection rates go up, including hospitalizations, we are seeing it go up because of social gatherings, not only in social places, but in homes private parties. We just got an update in the last 30 minutes from Jefferson County, and they are seeing exactly the same thing. Where we thought we would be moving on the new dial that uh, the state is now using, where they've got a kind of a little color chart, we were in level three, had gone up to level two, which was a good move, but now we're moved back to three. So we're losing ground. So. What's going on in Westminster is what's affecting many people and our neighbors around us. It's not just Westminster, Fort Collins, multiple dorms with hundreds of students locked and uh, socially distancing, but also locked in quarantine. Boulder, CU, same problem. Boulder also has gone to two other things that they've had to go to almost 30 offsite facilities where students have student housing or clubs that they stay with and quarantine those groups as well. They've also instituted an earlier closing for bars. Their bars now close at 10 p.m. We have not done real well the last couple of weeks. Colorado overall about three weeks ago was starting to look like a good trend. And then we had something called Labor Day hit and we lost all the ground we had made. So we are back to around 200 uh, as of yesterday afternoon. And you know, when you combine Labor Day and you combine just the general fatigue, I think people are feeling in dealing with uh, COVID-19 and, and then moving into a winter season, um, it's obvious we've got to be very diligent moving into the season. So I, I just want your best advice for Westminster residents and businesses as we move ahead here in the, in the weeks. Well, one of the things that I've been telling the businesses since I meet with them every week, the business owners have to be vigilant, but not just the business owners, the employees. That person, when you walk into a restaurant that meets you at the front desk, if you're not wearing face coverings, unless you have a medical excuse, they should not let you in because they're not only exposing the young people who are there as a wait staff and stuff, but the others in the restaurants. If you have a valid medical excuse not to wear a face covering, fine. But try to be protective of those who are around you. 
We have got to stay on top of this. Otherwise, we're going to see a severe backwards trend to stay at home. And that means our restaurants start closing to eat in. They have to go back to those that can to carry out only. Our businesses get impacted. Our employment base gets impacted. The city gets impacted overall because we're not collecting revenue. So it is strictly up to us. Moving forward or moving backwards is in the hands of those of us who live here in the city. Some good advice. Let, let's switch gears just a bit. Um, um, everyone knows that you do so much um, for Westminster uh, in a regional capacity. Uh, talk about the work you have been doing recently uh, on a regional basis as it relates to economic recovery, transportation planning, and, and just in general regional cooperation. Well, I think one of the big things that we've been working on is our CARES dollars, not only here in Westminster, but entire metro area uh, and the state included. Uh, I just signed off on another letter uh, with the Jefferson County Commissioners and the mayors of Jefferson County asking Congress to extend the CARES dollars deadline of December to give us additional time to spend the money we have to benefit our community. It's not just us. It's everybody in the country that has this artificial deadline of funds have to be expended. Some of the programs that we were able to fund are just getting started. So that puts us on a real time crunch. But not only that, it's the looking at what we're doing for economic recovery. Uh, just this past week, we uh, authored another uh, opportunity with Adams County for small businesses and primarily landlords and tenants, let's say it that way, to protect them from the losses that they have because people have been unable to make rent payments and doing some bundling for landlords who have multiple units to bundle those requests, make one request so that one check can get cut. Westminster's portion of putting into that was over half a million dollars. We think that by doing that, we again, protect the people who are most impacted of not having jobs today, keep them in their homes, keep the landlords from losing their mortgage payments overall so that those people still have a place to live. But we have a number of programs like our Westy Rise program, our food programs, that we, this is not just Westminster, it's all of us together. So a lot of this is pooled with our two counties, a lot of it's pooled with other cities. And the, uh, the newest program that uh, you and council approved uh, for our business community in Westminster, specifically as we're moving into the winter months, it's uh, kind of our winter recovery business program will uh, kick off um, on Thursday, October 1st. And so um, people can go to the website and find a lot more information about that because we want to we want to get those dollars out to people as well. I, I, I want to spend the remaining few minutes we have with you, uh, Mayor, to talk about how you're feeling about the future of our community as it relates to our recovery from this pandemic, uh, and especially in 2021. Well, Greg, I think the opportunity is here, but the, probably the thing that controls this first and foremost, do we have a vaccine? Do we have one that not only the medical community, but our first responders and the people who will need it feel comfortable taking? What we can't do is what we're seeing happen in other countries is rush to judgment on they've got something that's a cure and they not even finish the test process. Now my concern is we're going to see some of that. I think because of that, we're going to have a lot of people who are going to be very reluctant to take vaccines because they've not been proven. They've not gone through enough testing. Without a vaccine, I don't see how we can cure this long term, but we have the opportunity to help fight some of this. Keep in mind, our flu vaccines are uh, out already. They're available. So battling the flu virus along with the pandemic that we're in with COVID-19 is going to be a double shot going into the winter season and into next year as well. So my advice is if you can take the flu shot, get it. Sooner the better. But as soon as the COVID-19 comes out of testing and the CDC and the CDPHE and the other health agencies that we depend upon to giving us health guidance say this is a safe vaccine, please, please look at this as an opportunity to protect not only you and your families, but your entire community. Try to get it if you can. The sooner we have that available, the sooner we can get people vaccinated, the sooner we're going to be on. We'll be obviously talking a lot more about that in the months months ahead, and it's going to be months. So 
patience and uh, diligence and vigilance as well, I think is, is the key messages to take away from um, our talk today. Mayor Herb Atchison, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Greg, and best of luck to everyone.